This is the Becoming Muslim Podcast at UntoIslam.com, the show that helps people convert to Islam with hosts from the US, UK, and Australia. Now, uh, putting this kind of doubt in your heart, and you say, oh, okay, wow, wow, this is real, this is real, this is real, like I felt real for the first time, like I felt the truth and I felt the falsehood. What if I'm not guided? And, and what if I lose God's guidance? You know, I'm for sure going to be taken over by the devil. I'm not saying that I'll become like, you know, <laughs> I'll become the devil or anything. I mean, like, I would I would drown in falsehood and I would just be doing all things that are not going to bring me any benefit in the hereafter. Into this. And I, I, it's not like your A-levels where you can <laughs> repeat it every year if you want. You get one chance. This salvation thing, you get one chance, right? You get you get it wrong, you get it wrong, bro. <laughs> and it was quite clear. That's it. <clears throat> I had my answer right there and then. Right, right there and then. I tested the prophet. I got my answer. I tested the Quranic argument. I got my answer. This is the book directly from Allah, God, the Creator. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is his uh, is his uh, is his messenger. The same advice our Prophet gave to us, and all the other prophets of God is that search for the truth and never stop. And how do you do this? Pick up uh, pick up the Quran. Assalamu alaikum, dear listener of the Becoming Muslim podcast. Today. We have like a special guest, Hasmit. And um, for today, I'd like to do something a bit different that I usually do. So I would like, Hasmit, for you to uh, introduce yourself, um, like, you know, your age, where you come from, where you, where you live, what do you do in life? And then after this, we'll, like, you know, have a look at your uh, Islamic journey. But first of all, like, uh, yeah, introduce yourself. Yep. So, uh, wa alaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum to all my brothers and sisters who are listening in. Uh, so I'm Hasmit, or more popularly known uh, as Smith. It's not because I'm trying to be English or sound English or anything. It's because it's just Hasmit, right? That's my full name. Take away the high and you get Smith. So it just became Smith, Smith, Smith. So people just call me that way. Um, so I'm a Sikh, or Sikh uh, from the Punjabi background. Revert back to Islam. Alhamdulillah, it's been twenty years from now. Uh, I'm 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 thirty seven this year. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so I used I used to be a chef. Uh, I did French cuisine, Italian cuisine, and I did a lot of European cuisine. I did uh, uh, molecular cuisine as well, and. Uh, I now, now, now I own my own uh, food manufacturing business, a fully halal food manufacturing business. If, if given the time, inshallah, I'll explain why is it fully halal and not just halal. Like, what's the difference, right? Uh, mm. So, yeah. Uh, what else? What else can I say? Uh, where do you live? Not gonna share a lot more. <laughs> where, where do you live? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I live in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia at this time. Okay. Yeah. So you live in Malaysia, but you you originally originally from India. Is that what you say? You mentioned Punjabi, so I'm guessing it's India. No, 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 no. Uh, so okay. I'm born. So I'm born uh, over here in uh, Malaysia. Okay. I grew up. From, uh, I I'm stayed for a while in England, then came okay. back over here in in Malaysia, to Malaysia. Never been to India though. Never been to India. Okay. There. Okay. Okay. I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, now we're gonna enter like you know in the midst of the subject uh your okay. journey to islam so yeah tell me like how how it all started you know and give me the context we really want to understand like how you you went to islam from sikh background to islam mm -hmm. yeah okay so <clears throat> so i was like I, like i said i was born a sikh and i was born over here in malaysia I was born to sikh parents uh my Sick, uh understanding during my time being a Sikh was not like I, I didn't practice Sikh or anything. It's not like I was 
I was reading the Guru Granth Sahib. I was, you know, uh, keeping my beard, wearing a turban. And, uh, um, just a moment. So, so, sorry, sorry to, to cut you out. I think it's very yeah, important yeah. maybe to let us know. Um, just give us like a few uh, points about like what Sikh is, is about, like, you know, what about the religion, the Sikhism, so people can understand and, you know, mm -hmm. understand the transition. So what what okay. is being, be, being Sikh? Okay, so in, in, in Sikh is about relatively um, 450 to 500 years uh, old uh, religion is founded. I will use the word founded because in every history books they use the word founded, yeah? So it's founded by uh, Guru Nanak, okay? And they have 10 gurus. So you have the first guru who found uh, Sikhism, Guru Nanak, who came from a Hindu background. His family was Hindu. And um, the, the 10th guru, which is Guru Gobind Singh, okay? And their holy scriptures are called uh, the Guru Granth Sahib. Okay. They believe in one God, okay? They, are not, they, they believe that God is only one, and you will find that uh, there are many similarities, okay? Similarities, not the same, similarities between Sikhism, Islam, and Hinduism. Mm. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Did that, that explain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you. I was just like to, to give an idea to the listeners that who would not know about it. Okay, okay. Right. So I, I'll, I'll continue on, yeah? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, alhamdulillah. So <clears throat> I, I, mean, I wasn't a practicing sick per se. You know, I, I was a normal kid. You know, I would do kidly things. I don't know, get get myself in trouble, get her, you know, fight and th things like that. You know, like what every, every normal kid would do. I wasn't mm -hmm. interested in religion or God or whoever it is, you know, like, like why are you going to do three year old and you, you're running around, not your of first course. interest. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, as as I grew up um, and reached my, uh, uh, before I reached my teenage years, uh, uh, so I used to, I used to be uh, a rhythm guitarist, vocalist. I, I wrote my own song. So uh, by the age, by, by the age 11, Alhamdulillah, and, and and this was this this would this would play a big this would play a big role of uh, uh of how I converted in in the future. By mm. the, by the by the age eleven, I could play guitar. Uh, most importantly, I mean playing guitar wasn't a big deal. I could imagine music and how I want the music to be, the flow to be, and I could put it down on paper. Basically, that's called a composer. Mm. So at 11 years old, I was almost a composer, if you will say, right? If you don't want to say that, oh, what is 11 year old called composer? But that was today. 11 year old composer, and I didn't even know what like, 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 what, what was it, right? I didn't know mm -hmm. this talent. I didn't know that this was a gift. To me, that every kid could do this. It's not different. Mm. Like I can compose, like, the next person can compose as well. <clears throat> so I, I would go on and grow. Uh, in my life, <clears throat> this is the this is the the time when I would uh, take a short trip to uh, England, and, and in England I would uh, hear people talking about Islam, people talking about Hinduism. There's this place called Speakers Corner, right? Yeah, right. Yep. So, so I would be like, so my first impression of 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 Speakers Corner back at that time was really cool. It was really like. Everyone had their own ideas, you know, and, and they were... Can, can, you, exp can you explain Sorry? for the listeners what uh, Speaker's Corner is and what do they do? Okay, so Speaker's Corner is a park at, at Hyde Park. Uh, a, sorry, it's a place at Hyde Park in uh, England, central England, yeah? Mm -hmm. Close by to Kensington. Um, <clears throat> what happens at Speaker's Corner is... You, so anyone who comes to Speaker's Corner are given the freedom to openly speak and express what they feel, mm. okay? You you cannot cause any violence, but you can say anything you want to say, like mm. literally anything. Yes, anything. Free speech. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so okay. that's what Speakers, yeah, so that's what speakers Corner uh, is. <clears throat> so naturally, you, you have people talking about Islam, you have people talking about Christianity, you have people talking about uh, liberalism, you have people talking about all sorts of things right politics mm -hmm. um is fair or not and, and so on okay so I, thought this place, so I thought this place is really cool you know like uh, because you can't do this in other countries you know you can't you can't just simply 
uh, go out and start, uh, especially in Malaysia, you can't just simply go out and start uh, saying things, you know, you should, mm. you, you'll find problems with the government in the next. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, that, that kind of uh, sparked my, um, my, my idea to research more on things generally, just, just generally, right? <clears throat> mm-hmm. But I'm going to cut the story short. I'm going to cut the story a little bit short and just say that I came to Islam. Now, I haven't accepted Islam, but I came to fear about Islam, right? Mm-hmm. And although I was in a Malaysian country, sorry, I was in a Muslim country, but I never really cared about Islam. Like mm-hmm. I knew I knew that there were a lot of Malays, you know. Uh, Malays means the, the, the Aboriginals of this country, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so naturally, if you're a Malay, you're a Muslim. So we, I always had this perception: all Malays are Muslims. Mm. Okay, which is not, which is which, which is not. Uh, you know, if you go to places like the Borneo Islands, Sabah, Sarawak, they are uh, they can be uh, hate hunters tribes, and mm-hmm. uh, they are Aboriginals, right? So they are Malay, but they are they are not uh, Muslims. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So, I thought it was interested to know about. I mean, it was interesting to know about my my own religion, like what is Sikhism. So I went a little bit into it. We used to go to the Gurdwara. Gurdwara is basically the temple or the church or the masjid uh, mm-hmm. mentioned in 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 a, in the Gurmukhi uh, script. Mm-hmm. Gurmukhi is what the Punjabi spoke. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So yeah, so it's called uh, Gurdwara. Uh, we normally in English we just call it temple, but to Mentioned the real word, wording of it is called Gurdwara. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I would see the priest sitting down there. I would see him reading this 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 book, and I understood nothing. So it was super bored for me. For me, I got I, I got very bored when I was there because I don't understand anything, right? Mm-hmm. But but then then I thought, okay, let let me let me look at this at the Guru Granth Sahib and let me look what 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 is written in here and and. Naturally, you know, at that time, 2000, 2001, 2002, there was no much. I mean, it wasn't easy to get a uh, good Mukhi translation. How old were you at, at this period of time? Oh, I was 17. <clears throat> 17. 16, okay. 17. Yeah, okay. 16, 17. So, <clears throat> I tried and I, I, I asked a friend to get me this book. So, he was going to go back to Pakistan. And I told him, could you get me a translation of uh, of a good of this uh, the Guru Granth Sahib, uh, an English translation or something, you know, something other, something that, that a normal human being can understand. <laughs> so, 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 pretty much, you ask like a Pakistani friend to get you a translation yes, of a Sikh book in Pakistan. Yes, correct. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, I told, uh, he was a Muslim. He's a Muslim. And I told him to, to please get me a, uh, a translation. And he went. I came back after a few uh, weeks and brought me the translation. And so I, was, I, I started reading. I was looking into this, right? I was looking into this. So, 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 so <clears throat> I saw, okay, first, Guru Nanak, what he says. He says, uh, uh, God is one. Okay? He mm-hmm. says, God is not a male, God is not a female. God is no man, God is no woman. Uh, uh, God is beyond our humanly conception. We cannot imagine him. He's, he, 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 he's beyond our, our ideology, right? Uh, mm-hmm. God is merciful, right? And, and this is, this is, this was all very, uh, very intriguing to me. I was like, oh, okay, for, all right, first. Because I had this idea that God was in a, um, this Christian, uh, perspective, you know, because you you have to you have to give the Christians credit when they marketed the uh, Jesus being God, they really went all out. <laughs> mm, right? That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So 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 I always thought, oh, okay, yeah, God, Jesus, Zeus, Hercules, kind of thing. Okay, that was my ideas of God in the first place. Mm-hmm. So when I read this, the Guru Granth Sahib, and he's talking about this. All right, fine. And then and then and then. It, it, I was quite surprised or taken taken aback that the Guru Granth Sahib or Guru Nanak was mentioning Allah. Mm. So by name, say, does it mention Allah by name? By name, by name, yeah, okay. by name. That's interesting, right? So yeah. it says uh, the inaccessible Lord Allah. Okay, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and he talks uh, many more things about Allah, right? And yeah. the fifth guru, which is also a very important guru, yeah, who yeah. He, he's the one who actually uh, built or finished building uh, the, 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 what, what you call the golden temple in Amritsar uh, in mm-hmm. India, okay. which, is, uh, which is the most holy land for the, uh, for the sake. It's okay. like the Kaaba for the sake. If you okay. were... Uh, we were to so, say, yeah. So where right. is it again? This place? Uh, it is in uh, Amariksa. Amariksa, Punjab. okay. Punjab. Yeah. Okay, so do they do like some kind of pilgrimage there or something like this? Yeah, people do do. Uh, they, uh, most of the six they do try to go to this place, but it's not mm. like Hajj that we have to go if we are uh, uh, able to. You know, it's like one of our uh, fifth pil- is the one in one of our uh, religious pillars. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, for them, it is it is more, the most holiest place, but you know it, it's not like uh, they they have to go there. But of course, they would love to go there. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, <clears throat> so uh, uh, this in, made me very, very, very curious to know more. And yep. the fifth guru, he made a claim. Right. He made a claim, and <clears throat> to the listeners, <clears throat> you don't have to take my word for it. It's in your own Guru Granth Sahib, right? And if you want, if you if you want to go and look it up, you can go and look it up, <clears throat> right? Uh, I can't give you the quote. In, I can't give you the quote now. What you could do is you could go to uh, if you want to, you could go to uh, columnology. Uh, no, no. I'll tell you what. I'll give you the words, and then you can type it into Google, and then and then they and, and then you can look at it. It's by Guru Arjun Dev. <clears throat> And Guru in the book of Guru Arjun Dev, right? <clears throat> so this is what Guru Arjun Dev says. He says, the one Lord, the Lord, sorry, the one Lord, the God of this world is my God, Allah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So, so if you yeah, you can just type in that that and um it should it should uh bring you straight directly to the verse, right? And you can check it out. <clears throat> so I was I was kind of shocked because like I immediately got the message. I immediately got the message, but when I went to 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 like I went to my mom or my dad, they were just like, oh, I don't know, like I to never read the, the I never read the Guru Granth Sahib. I don't know what I'm trying to say over here. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> so when I went to the priest or the um, the Granthi, okay, so the Granthi is the Punjabi word for priest, yeah, mm-hmm. the learned guys. So when I went to him and I asked him this, he could he. he he could not give me an answer that I would want, right? So, he, so, he so, so, that, so, so, what did you, yeah. you ask him exactly? What was your question? Yeah, I asked him what, what, why, why, why is Guru Arjun Dev calling his God Allah? Okay. Right. So, 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 so he says this: uh, Allah is one of the names of God, mm. just like you know, you were to say Jesus, you were to say uh, what. Uh, 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 Shiva and, and so on, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Yeah. So one of the names. Okay, fine. I can accept that. But here's another problem. <clears throat> you, I've got a what, 15th, 16th, uh, 17th century Indian guy who lived in India, who is writing for the Indian crowd, who is talking to the Indian crowd, who understand Indian and communicates in Indian with the Indians. Why mm-hmm. is he using an Arabic word? That's true, right? That's true. And 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 it's so uh, it, 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 he doesn't use the word rub because rub would also mean and uh, rub is also an Arabic word, right? Yes, yes. And a rub is is God as well. Uh, if you want to bring it to Urdu, he could have used like Bhagwan or Khuda. You know, these are all Urdu or Indian uh, uh, native words to describe uh, God. He uses mm-hmm. a very special term, Allah, which means Al-Ilah, right? Which means the only true God. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this is interesting. So I asked him about this. And he says that um, Guru Arjun Dev was talking to a Muslim crowd. So he was mm. talking to a Muslim crowd. So he was addressing them. Uh, I mean, of course, I did not have an argument with him, but you could see why this is not logical because it, it is irrelevant who Guru Arjun Dev was to me 
Guru Arjunis could have talking to the, could have been talking to the aliens. It wouldn't have mattered because he made the claim, "My God." Right? Mm, that's true. Saying, your God, yeah. Uh, he wasn't your God or your God or your God. He's saying my God. That's true. So then, yeah. So then, this this is the the, the first step into the journey to to Islam. That, that okay. That I took. Just yeah. two second. I have like two quick questions that I just want yeah. to to clarify. Yeah. Uh, so the first question is like uh, in this. The, so this fifth guru before him, uh, as any other guru mentioned Allah. As the name of God, is, or it started with him? No, no. Uh, guru Nanak was the first guru already mentioned Allah, like Allah, oh, the inaccessible God, and so on. So, and so, so, the, yeah. so they, they all mentioned Allah, but this one in particular say Allah is my God. Yes, correct. <clears throat> okay, okay. And uh, the second thing that I wanted to know is just like uh, so. Uh, I think they all each have a book, right? Or there's one book, and they they made addition to this book. Am I understanding this correctly? Yeah, so, um, okay, let me explain how, how you, so, 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 Guru Nanak, now, Guru Nanak was a uh, literate man, yeah, he was born to a family uh, that was uh, quite, quite well to do, his, his father was like, uh, I don't know, a tax collector at the, at the village or something like that, mm -hmm. so he was quite educated as well, so he used to wrote uh, hymns, he would write poems, right, hymns and so on, now, the fifth Guru, he compiled the work of Guru Nanak, Right, the the second guru, the third guru, the the fourth guru, and the fifth guru. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And and his, I mean, his his own self, his own work, and this then became the Adi Granth, which means which literally translate the first book. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, or the early book, right? <clears throat> so this is called the Adi Granth. Now from here on, the other five gurus, when they put in their works to it, right? You can call it as a, I wouldn't say an, 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 an additional because it passed down kind of, of like a thing. So when it came to Guru Gobind Singh, the tenth Guru, when he compiled all this, all from right from Guru Nanak to his work, he compiled all and made it into one. Then it became the Guru Granth Sahib, which they mm. have now today in, uh, in 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 their possessions. Okay, that's the name of the book, Guru Granth Sahib. Guru Granth Sahib, yeah. <clears throat> is there, is there any more? Yes. Okay. Is there any more Guru or that, did it stop at the number 10? Yeah, it stopped at number 10. But there is some kind of, you know, as, as time goes on, people come up with their own ideology. Uh, yeah. They say that now, uh, they, they say the 11th Guru because the, of the book. So the book represents the 11th Guru, so on mm. and so forth. But for me... I, I always go back to scriptures. I don't listen to people because, you know, you have mm. all this blah and all that. I mean, sorry, you have people making up their own ideas, little That's bit true. ideas about their own uh, belief system because they want to believe something, right? Mm -hmm. So when even even when I look at the at the Sikhi scriptures, the 10th guru, he said that, look, after this, there's no more guru. After this, mm. there's, no, there's, no, there's not going to be any more living guru. Okay. This is the yep. end of it. So, so uh, this is the book, and 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 go with this, right? The Guru Granth Sahib. This is the book. Go with this. So, and and uh, six, as uh, that that six back at that time, they didn't uh, say that the eleven. Uh, I mean, the Guru uh, Granth Sahib was the eleventh Guru, or so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would just say ten gurus, you know, and people and other six can can have their um, own opinions. I mean. It's not wrong to have your own opinion. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying you are right or wrong, but you know, that's what I believe. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. I, <clears throat> sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I have just like one. Sorry, I have like question because I'm a curious person. Okay. But just one like question before you like you move on to you know like what's uh, uh, your journey to Islam. Um, mm -hmm. So when you read this book, because I'm I'm guessing so it's the fundament of the Sikhism, uh, Sikhism religion. That's what they follow. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, because so you know I'm familiar with the Bible, the Quran, the the Torah, mm -hmm. this book, uh, in mm -hmm. a certain way to the Bhagavad Gita. But I want to understand like uh, the Sikh book, like how, how how does it work? Is it like a book of rules? Is it mixed? Is there hymns, uh, rules? Like how does it work? This book exactly? How do you use it for your religion when you're Sikh? Yeah, so <clears throat> there are there are certain uh, kind of uh, I, I would guess it's more of an advice, right? Mm. 
So you see, in the Quran, there are there are strict rules, right? Yeah. There are strict rules. Do not do not uh, do not harm your body. Do not eat uh, from the you know uh, from the unclean. So yep. so Allah says this very clearly. You are prohibited to uh, consume from the unclean. Yeah. Right. So so we know. I mean, we know uh, what what Allah is saying, and then uh, so Allah makes it very clear. And then you have got from from the uh, from from the Quran. You've got uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You've got his hadith, right? And yeah. and and that's a very long story because you've got you've got hadith Sahih, which means uh, you know it, it's authentic. And even in the authenticness of it, you've got mutawatir, which is witnessed by many people. You've got uh, yeah. 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 So uh, let, let's not get into that because then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. hours about it, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, so the uh, Guru Granth Sahib. It's similar in a sense of <clears throat> it gives advice instead of ruling. It doesn't give state ruling. It doesn't. It doesn't inform you like uh, like if you have to divorce your wife. What happens? What are the steps that you need to take? Right? Like so mm-hmm. on and so forth. But it does advise you to say that you know uh, don't cause hate. You know always love your brothers and sisters. Uh, it does say that you know you should. You should always give charity, look out for the other person. Okay, <clears throat> so we just say those, those kind of things, mm-hmm. <clears throat> kind okay. of uh, advice, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, of things. <clears throat> I have I have one one last question. Sorry, I, I said mm-hmm. like a, but just mm-hmm. just I think it's interesting to understand. You know the 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 context fully, especially for people who haven't been exposed to the Sikhism religion. So. I want to understand. So, this guru, uh, do they see themselves like so, uh, are some kind of prophets, and are they, do they say that their word are inspired by God? Because you know, the Quran uh, is mm-hmm. revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who believe is the word of God, directly right. reveals to the prophets. So, what is the situation with the guru and whatever they write? <clears throat> All right, that's a very interesting question, brother. So, I've made a video on this, right, um, and and. I've gotten, I've got, I've gotten a lot of kind of backlash from this because so you've got this kind of movement in Asia, and then you've got this movement in uh, 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 in England or the Western world, right, where they, they believe kind of differently, right. Mm-hmm. But let, but let me just say this: the gurus, at the most, they believe themselves to be a man of God, okay. right, or, or or prophets, or prophets. That's okay. it, right. Uh, but they did not say that they were gods. They never say that they were gods, right? They never claim that they were gods. Although uh, they, they, uh, today people like basics of sick, right? They will mm-hmm. try to open scriptures and try to twist and turn the scriptures. They're doing what the Christians are doing. Uh, because uh, how do I know this? Because uh, they, they 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 came on attacking me on uh, on a video, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they tried to prove me uh, wrong, but but. For my uh, my own con uh, my my own uh, sincere sincere uh, uh, I don't want it to hurt the the the, the Tiki community or anything. Yeah. I did apologize. I did say that uh, <clears throat> you know uh, I retract the statement of uh, that Guru Nanak never made the claim that he was God. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, I just I just said that because I know look Sikhi are not like Christians. They have not been approached in this way before. Where people are proving what their ideology, so certain ideology that they have is wrong, and they yeah. can prove it, you know, uh, uh, with evidence. But now I'm thinking back again, uh, all the other videos. Um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and make, because Allah says this, right? Tell the truth, even if it goes against yourself. Yes. Even if you don't like it, you speak the truth. Mm. So yeah, so you know. Even I might get that uh, uh, some of my Punjabi friends might not want to be my friends anymore. But you know what? Okay, what well, you know? I rather have my Punjabi friends leave me than God leave me. Fair deal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah. So um, so yes, they never call themselves God. They never did call themselves God. Okay, and uh, today people are basics of six. They are trying to make Guru Nanak God and so on and so forth. Right? Mm, See, look, okay. if Guru Nanak was God. Why would Guru Nanak be writing 
God is not a man now or say a female, nor say uh, a, a woman. He's not a male nor say a female. Okay. Yep, that right? makes sense. He says, why would he be writing that? Yeah. Yeah. No, so, so he was probably the man of God. Yeah, I would say that. Okay, interesting. So thank thank you for this. Like obviously, I would have many questions, but I just think we need to move on with the the story. So uh, okay, so you started like you get this book, you get a translation, and mm -hmm. like you start like you know thinking at this point. So what happened next after this on your journey to Islam? Yeah. So so once I discovered this, the, and 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 I was so I had to ask myself the question because no um no sec was giving me an honest answer. Mm. Either either they did not understand themselves, or they, they did not know how to answer, or you know. <clears throat> so I say, okay, fine. I will go to the Quran then. Where mm -hmm. else am I going to find what, what what is Allah about? You right? Of course, yeah. It will be the Quran. So so I closed the Guru Granth Sahib for a while, and I went to the Quran. Mm -hmm. And when I opened opened the Quran, right? Uh, I, I I remember this very clearly. Alhamdulillah. I open to a page in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah says, <clears throat> to the unguided, he will not guide them. He will put a whale in front. If he wishes, he will put a whale in front of their eyes and he will close up their ears and heart from the truth. Mm, yeah. So then, uh, you know, this, 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 this is a very interesting verse. Very interesting to a non-Muslim for me like, at that time. It was very interesting because I, I asked myself one question. Right? I asked myself this question. Wait a minute. If God decides to not show me the truth or let me hear the truth or even let me, you know, feel the truth, then how am I going to ever get to the truth? I mean, it, it sounds like an unjust God, right? It's like, like oh, I'm just, I don't want you to get the truth you know, for some reason, so I'm just going to not give you the truth. Of course. So yeah. how, how, how do I know, you know, how do I know that, that I am guided? How do I know that my eyes have not been covered up by the whale, my ears have not been covered up, and my heart has not been covered up? How do I know this? Mm -hmm. What is the criteria that I need to use to know that you know I'm at least, at the very least, still in the guidance of God? Mm. So then I went and I, uh, and, and I asked uh, some of my friends. When I went back to England uh, on a holiday, I went back to England, and uh, I met some of my Muslim friends. And I, I I told them this, and I told it, hey, you know this this, this verse in the in the Quran it says this, you know, it seems a little bit harsh, you know, like for God to do that, I'm stop it, Allah. So, and then then they asked me, then then they asked me, uh, they, they, they they were quite surprised. They were like, yes, yes, I can see, you know, and then and they would say that, uh, yeah, I can see, and it's very interesting the way you look at it. <laughs> and like, bro, you're sitting down here, you are reading the Quran, you're reading the Guru Granth Sahib, you're reading this and you're trying to search for the truth and you're asking yourself, how do I know <laughs> if, if I'm guided? <laughs> <laughs> right? how, do you, how do you know? Like, can you see how ridiculous your question is? Can you see how the, 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 the Iblis or the Shaitan uh, try to trap you, takes you away from uh, the truth by putting mm. subahat, or uh, putting this kind of doubt in your heart, and you say, "Oh, okay, wow, wow, this is real. This is real. This is real." Like I felt real for the first time. Like I felt the truth, and I felt the falsehood, wow. and it was so real. And 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 it is so. I mean, when you realize that, Allah Akbar, you know, I really felt afraid, like sincerely afraid, that. What if I'm not guided, and and what if I lose God's guidance? You know, I'm for sure going to be taken over by the devil. I'm not saying that I'll become like you know, <laughs> I'll become the devil or anything. I mean, like I would, I would drown in falsehood, and I would just be doing all things that are not going to bring me any benefit in the hereafter. Yeah. So from there on, then 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 I have. 100% interest in looking into the Quran. I, I, I read part of the Quran and um, then I came to the realization and this, this, and this, if you, if you notice, this keeps happening to me over and over. Like I will do something halfway and then I will just like realize something and I will just leave it and I'll do something else, right? Mm. So I came to, to, to a realization, wait a minute, uh, I don't need to read the Quran yet. I need to I need to read 
and to do research on the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because yeah, wasallam. Yep. he is the person who uh, you know he's the person who actually brought the Quran. Uh, like, I'm not, uh, like we know that the Quran came from Allah to Jibreel to to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But the text that we have today, like right uh, in the Quran, so he brought it. So if if he was lying or if he was making up any stories or anything. Then by default the Quran would not be true, and I I'm not going to waste my time reading what the Quran has to say. Mm-hmm. Right? So, so so I went I went and look at his life. I went and look at and who was this person? Who was this individual by the name of Muhammad? Uh, you know, uh, who was born in the sixth century in a, in the Arabian desert. Uh, you know, his parents. Uh, he he lost his parents when he was young. He was raised by his uncle, right? He was married to one of the most wealthiest uh, uh, women in Mecca, right? At that time, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, Khadija. Uh, he was, his family is the custodian of the Kaaba. So he had money. He had a, a, he had a, a good, good wife. He had name, prestige, right? Title. Uh, people, he, he used to be, you know, if people had like any kind of problems, they'll go to, to this man, uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he would, he would solve their problems. So he had, I mean, he, he had what ma- every man wanted. Mm-hmm. Right? He had what every man wanted. Uh, he had respect, he had trust, he had uh, standards, he had, you know, pe- people looked up to him and people listened to him, even uh, pre prophethood, pre prophethood. Right? Yes. Yeah, so, so any man would be happy to be in that position, right? Where yeah. you can you can you can just say something and people will follow you. So but now for 40 years this man was also known as Al Amin, which means the trusted one, right? People yeah. used to leave their possessions with him, they would go wherever they wanted to go and they'll come back and they would find that his possession, the what the possessions given to him. Uh, uh, when he gave back, 100% all are there. And how do we know this? Because later on during uh, during his his prophethood, even his own enemies, the own enemies of the prophet, agreed to once again say, we trust him. This man is a trustable man. Then this is his own, uh, you know, uh, his own enemies. Mm, yeah. yeah so, so he had every man, uh, every man's dream. He had it all, right? Yep. And when revelation came, right? When when God said that, okay, now you're going to be the prophet. He had to leave all this. I mean, look, he he was ridiculed, right? Obviously, uh, they 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 pushed him, uh, the, the enemies, to to a bank of period where, where where they said that nobody could sell them any food or any groceries. Uh, mm. It was exiled. They had to leave. Because they were going to be uh, murdered, so they, they had to uh, leave uh, Makkah and they went to Yatrib, which mm-hmm. would be modern day Makkah. Uh, sorry, modern day uh, Madina. Yep. Right. So he lost everything. He lost everything for what? He it did not give him any more political uh, uh, right. So uh, he did not become a better person. He, uh, sorry, he did not become a a better person in 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 worldly states. Like like for example, he did not become a prime minister or anything. He did not become uh, you know he did not gain any money from it. He lost from it, right? Yeah. So if you look that uh, a human who is in politics, they would do things that brings gain for themselves. But this man did things. That brought loss to himself. If if you would see from that from the you know just the naked eye of your lens, right? Mm-hmm. You would see that it, it doesn't make sense. So it can't be that this guy is this guy is you know I, he's trying to do for um, for political reasons, trying to gain something, and, and because he was not gaining anything. He, you know, people were trying to kill him. For God's sake, <laughs> that's, the, that's the worst thing. Right? Yeah. So, uh, so I eliminated the idea that uh, he was doing this to gain something, to be a political leader or, or to be a king or anything like that, because reality would prove, prove it differently. Okay, let's say, okay, <clears throat> this guy, maybe he just made up the stories. Maybe he just made this whole thing up, this whole idea that, God came to, uh, you know, send an angel and the angel spoke to him and he's getting revelation and he's 
this, that, and the other, right? <clears throat> let's yep. test this. Let's test this claim, right? Let's test this claim. This guy. Is, so Muhammad, at this point in my life, he was making things up, and I'm, I'm and I'm gonna go in testing his claim, his claims. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was illiterate. We know he was illiterate because <clears throat> you know uh, everyone who knew him knew him for a long time. Right, and if he suddenly came up and say that, uh, oh, I, I could, I don't, I, I can't write the Quran, you know, by myself because I'm illiterate. The enemies would be the first one to snap up and say, "No, wait a minute, we know you. We know you since you were born, hmm. since you were a baby. You're not illiterate. You can write. You can read." Right? Yeah. That's what would have happened. But no, even that once again, even the enemies did not say anything. They, they they did not say uh, go against this 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 uh, this this claim that he was illiterate. You know he, uh, he couldn't read and write, so he couldn't have authored the Quran, uh, read or write the Quran by himself. When we look at the context of the Quran, it talks about the Torah, it talks about the Zabur, it talks about the Injil, and it talks about his own self. It talks about uh, the future, the present, and 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 the uh, you know and and the here after and what you need to do and puts things into prospects right yeah. and uh, i look into uh the, the the lifetime between the the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam until now you've got so many uh, people following or coming into islam who are highly intellectual people these are not just people you uh, know normal people these are scientists these are biologists these are people who are who studied the the universe right like for example Avi Sina or Ibn Sina, right? Avi Sina is the westernized name of him, right? Until today, the creed or the idea of medicine still comes from his teaching. And guess what? Where does his teachings come from? From the Quran, right? So, yeah. can an illiterate man who doesn't know how to read and write, who has never left uh, Arabia, probably at, in this point, maybe once, right? And there's been just in a small community most of his life, know all this. Right? I mean, how true. could this person know all this? You go ahead, brother. And no, I say it's true. It's true. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, it's a little bit, I mean, it's a bit funny to say that, to now made up, make up the story and say that, that he, he was just simply writing things down and saying that he was getting revelation. Right? Because mm-hmm. the Quran doesn't talk about normal things. It doesn't talk about normal things. It doesn't. It doesn't give you the idea that someone was just sitting down in an Arabic desert and writing things down, coming up with his own idea and saying God spoke this to me. Because that would be very easy to, to for for biologists to to to, to scout out. It would be very easy of for course. scientists to scout out. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So um, going a little bit a, a little bit deeper, I. I, I asked myself this question. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Maybe, I mean, because, look, during the time at, uh, of the Kaaba, right, they, uh, there was uh, pagan idols in there and uh, people used to come from all over the world and that was the center point that they would come to. So he was growing up there. So obviously he could have heard the stories from, from, from people, right? Because Everyone was coming there. They could have told the story of the, of the Christians, told the stories of the Jews, told all the stories of the Greek, told the story of the Roman, the Viking, and so on. Mm-hmm. Right? And he could have been here this, and he could have, you know, uh, repeated this, and someone could have wrote it down, right? Yeah. But then again, it would still go against the idea because the the Romans or, or the Vikings or the Jews that they have the Torah. Or the Christians, right? So if when you in fact, in fact when you talk about the Christians, well, the Quran doesn't talk about the the the, the Bible that they are having today, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. the Quran explains about the about about Jew the Jew and it corrects it. It corrects like for example, um, during the time of uh, 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 what what's his name? So there's a story Moses during the time of Moses and during the time of um La ilaha illallah. I forgot Jesus? this name. Um, no, no. During the time of uh, Musa alayhi salam and um was it uh who, who which is the prophet uh, the one that uh, 
his whole family abandoned him and then uh, the king of, uh, of arabia uh, the king of uh, egypt made him the advisor was it uh, oh, uh yusuf Salam? Yusuf, Yusuf, exactly, Yusuf Salam. So during the time of Which Yusuf, is Joseph. J- Joseph, yeah. So during the time of Joseph, right, uh, the Quran mentioned the dynasty and it mentions king, right? It mentions king. Yep. Right? And during the time of Musa or Moses, right, the Quran does not mention king, the Quran mentions Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Now, yeah. about I think about a hundred years or two hundred years ago, I'm not really sure when, uh, the hieroglyphics were found and they were deciphered, right? And lo and behold, the the Egyptians explained that there were two king that, that, that there were two dynasties before the Pharaohic dynasties. The dynasty was called King, and mm-hmm. they looked back at the time, and it was during the time of Joseph. Allah Akbar. Right mm-hmm. and 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 during the time of Moses, it was uh, Pharaoh, Allah Akbar. But when you look at the Bible, the Bible uses the term Pharaoh for both of it, for both the dynasties. So the Bible has an historical error that the Quran clears. So how would this man know about it? How would this, this 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 man named Muhammad, even though everybody was coming from everywhere and talking about, if you want to say they were talking about the Bible and he heard and he asked someone to write it down, he would have he would have then also heard the lie. He would have also asked them to write down the lie, right? That's true. That's true. And one thousand five, but and, and maybe people will say then, uh, because I've heard this before. You know, they say Muhammad could read the hieroglyphics. Really? Come on. <laughs> that is hyper-skeptical now. It's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. right? Really? Why couldn't even read his own language and constantly read the hieroglyphics, right? I mean, no one could read the hieroglyphics at that point because if there were anybody 1,400 years ago who could read hieroglyphics, it would be in history. It would be in history 1,400 years ago. Uh, in, in Egyptian uh, desert, people would find this and people would have write it down. You don't find any historical document from that time talking about the uh, Egyptian dynasties. Okay, so no, you're just making things up. So he couldn't have lied. He couldn't have uh, be making his own story up and saying that uh, you know um, it's a claim. Okay. Mm-hmm. So so what have we what have we uh, uh, decipher? We decipher that he was not doing it for political reasons. He was not lying, making up things, right, for his own purposes. Okay, maybe he was deceived. Because, and, and this is what the, the, the Christians would claim, right? He, when he went to the, into, the, into the cave, uh, the angel came down, who he thought is an angel, who was actually a devil, who, and he was deceiving him all the time. Well, first of all, to refute the Christians, in the Christian Bible itself, it says that uh, Satan can stand divided against his own. So he can't uh, be telling uh, the, the, the prophet to do things that, that, that goes against his nature. And that was exactly what he was saying, right? Don't be yeah. close to... <laughs> I mean, I mean it, it doesn't make sense, right? For, for, for Satan to come and tell, look, listen, don't be close to me. Know that I'm your clear enemy. Ask Allah to seek refuge from me. Turn to Allah. Do not do black magic. Do not get engaged in gym. Okay. Don't yeah. even think about me. Always beware about me. That's not a very intelligent Satan. And I'm not giving any praises to the Satan, but we know that Satan definitely knows more than mankind. He couldn't do that. Of course. <laughs> right? So he couldn't have been deceived by the Satan because the, the Quran itself refused the idea of that. It's teaching everything that goes against Satan. Okay? And that's just reality. Right? So, so he, he wasn't being deceived. Okay? So what else do we have? What, what other claims do we have? He was, he was doing it for, for, for himself, for, you know, to be popular, so on. He debunked that. He was doing it because uh, he, you know, what he thought that he was getting revelation and he made things up and so on. Debunk that he was uh, deceived in the cave. Debunk that. Okay, what else do we have? Right. Okay. 
So it comes down to the final one, yeah? magic. Mm. <laughs> this is magic. He was in cahoots with uh, the, this evil uh, black magic or the demon people and all that. And these people were telling him what to do and what to write down and all that and all this. Well, once again, we put in the same idea, the same idea, the Quran teaches us to stay away from black magic, stay away from the, the world of the unseen uh, beings, that they, that, that, that they are not part of you and stay away from them. For you, your refuge is only Allah. For you, your refuge is always going to be uh, uh, Allah, right? Anything that you need, ask Allah. Anything that you want, ask Allah, right? So it, keeps, it, 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 it teaches against black magic. It teaches against black magic. And uh, during that time, what did the enemies of the Prophet uh, did? They, come, they, they brought together the most renowned uh, uh, poetry uh, people individuals at that time and they went and they said uh, go to this person Muhammad and listen to him reciting this book and come back to us with an answer on how this individual can get this idea and when they went and when they came back they said the same thing we don't know where he's getting this idea from but wherever he might be getting this idea from it is not from this world so when it's the, it is not from this world, it's supernatural, right? It's, that, so it's supernatural, right? So when it's supernatural and it goes against the teaching of black magic, so it can't be black magic because Allah, you know, there's a passage in the, in, in the Quran during the time of the Babylon where, where Allah says he brought two angels down to teach black magic but the, and, and also gave the angels the messages to tell to mankind for verily I've come, we have come with the teachings of black magic. But beware. Do not learn from us that this black magic, it will condemn you. Right? And people still went to, 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 to these angels and they say, we want to learn. And, and the angels said, no, do not learn from us. We are here as a test for you. So Allah tells this whole story. Allah, Allah tells this whole story clearly. right? And today when we look at where this, all this whole magic thing starts and everything, we go back to Babylon. We go yeah. back to the time of, 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 of Nebuchadnezzar. We go back to the time of um, uh, 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 Abraham alayhi salam. Right? We go back to the time of Babylon. Right? Yeah. So Allah is mentioning things that are just too spot on. Too spot on. Right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 he's, and he's telling the stories of, uh, look, this is where black magic came from. So uh, I sent it down as a test and I told them to not learn from it. Bro, it can't be black magic then. <laughs> like, like, why would the black magic book tell you to do not do black magic? Of course. So doesn't make sense. Four, so four claims gone. And everything everything generally you could come up with would go into this four claims uh, 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 kind of thing, right? So all the four claims is gone. Is you now I'm left with one claim. This man was telling the truth. He was who he was. He wasn't making things up. He wasn't saying anything. So he was the man that was sent by Allah as uh, as a prophet, right, to the for the mercy of mankind. And what is this mercy? The mercy is the Quran, the correction of the past. Because just imagine this, right? If Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not come. The Quran was never given. Literally, literally every human being would be drowning in falsehood because truth would have never come. Allah yep. would have never corrected the, uh, the, 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 the pen of the lying scribes who changed the words and attributed to Allah. Let me repeat this. They did not change Allah's words. They changed the words in the books that they copied Okay, and then they say this is what Allah said, and we see this. We see this today. In in the Bible, we know First John five seven, uh, which is is a, is a fabrication. We know uh, the Codex Sinaiticus don't talk about the uh, the Great Commission. You look at the Bible today, even in the NIV and so on, the Great Commission is still there. What is it doing there? Yeah. Right. So everyone would be in 
in, in a state of uh, sin, in the state of falsehood, if not for this Quran. Right, so Alhamdulillah, this is the this is the mercy of our Lord. Just in itself, all that this is the mercy of our Lord. We we see that, and 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 uh, after doing this research of, of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, um, I was I was convinced to a certain point. You could say 95 percent. Like I was very con- convinced, but I wanted to do one one more thing. I said I'll do one more thing. So I learned up apologetics. I would watch the argument of people like Amadidat. I would watch the argument by people like Yusuf Istet, uh, people like uh, Zakir Naik, right? Yeah. And whenever I would go for holidays to 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 um to the US or to uh, the UK and so on, I would go and have a discussion or a debate uh, with the Christians or the Chinese or the Buddhists or whoever you can be, right? I would just go in and I would defend Islam. And naturally, mm-hmm. of course, they will think that I'm, I'm a Muslim because I'm defending Islam, but I'm not. But why, why did I do this? Sounds kind of weird, isn't it? I did this because I figure I'm going to go and defend the Quranic argument. And if anyone, any one of these people who have been doing this apologetics way longer than me can give me a rational refutation, then I'm gonna then 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 his time is gone again. I'm not gonna take it. I know I, because this we're talking about salvation. I I was really 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 into this, and I, I it's not like your A levels where you can <laughs> repeat it every year if you want. You get one chance. This salvation thing, you get one chance, right? You get you get it wrong. You get it wrong, bro. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, Allah Akbar. Uh, I did this for a couple of uh, I think uh maybe one year or so, and, and no one could refute it. I mean, they wouldn't, they, even, even if they were to say, or they listen to this podcast and they remember the story, oh, Hasmin, I don't remember this guy. Right? And they say, I refute him. Well, they did not refute me in the sense of, they did not refute Islam in the sense of logical refute. They gave waffle sto- uh, stories. They gave red herrings. They made up their own stories. Okay, So they did not actually refute anything. And it was quite clear. That's it. <clears throat> I had my answer right there and then. Right, right there and then. I tested the prophet. I got my answer. I tested the Quranic argument. I got my answer. This is the book directly from Allah, God, the Creator, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is his uh, is his uh, is his messenger. Uh, do, you, do you remember the exact moment where you come, you came to this realization when you say, "Okay, that's it." Do you remember the, the yeah, exact yeah, moment? I mean, I, I, I've had like uh, so many dis- uh, discussions. I was just listening and listening, and I remember it was in uh, it was in the UK, and uh, and I was listening to this to this guy. He was Christian, and he was just talking and talking and talking. And I know he was making making things up from the Bible. I, I I've read the Bible, <laughs> so I know he was like making things up. Like when I say John three seven, uh, fathers the only true true God. It's like. No, Father, and so, so you, you have to see it in context, you have to read the whole thing, you know, all these things that they say. You know, it says uh, Father and Jesus is the only true God. But I, I did not argue, but, but in my heart, I was like, that's not what it says, man. You're just being dishonest. And just at, at, at that time, I just got too tired and I'm like, I've done enough. This is one year, one and a half year of this. I'm not gonna, if, if, if there was anyone that was going to refute it, at least they would have come up. They would at least come close to refuting it. They were not even anywhere near refuting it, right? And I just said, in my heart, while this guy is talking over, over what I'm thinking, like, I just blurred out. Wallahi, I remember this day like it was yesterday. I just blurred out and I could hear noises around me. And... I just was talking to myself, like my own imagination, talking to myself, and I was saying, uh, why would you guide me? Since you have, it would be it would be wrong of me, you know. I would never blame you, God, if I don't accept your religion, and then you put me in hellfire, it would be on me. It would not be your fault. You've guided me clearly, like. Masha Allah, it can't be more clear. And and if I still going to be persistent and don't accept it, 
how then can I even blame or even utter a single word to the creator of this universe when he throws me into hellfire? Uh, I can't say that. Oh, you love all human beings. Why are you throwing me into hellfire? Simple. I did not mm-hmm. accept the true creator, right? So right then, then in in my own way, in my own way, I said, you know, Allah, I accept you as my creator. I accept you as God. I accept the, uh, uh, all the messengers that you have sent. And uh, 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 if I if if I should die today while I'm going home, I cannot say it in Arabic, but know that I've already accepted this. I know this is the truth, and I and I accept it. I am mm. your slave, and I am uh, I'm willing to give my life for Masha you. Allah. Right, right. Yeah. So so I couldn't like say the shahada, of course, at that time. But to me, it was it was good enough. Allah yeah. knew. So if anything would have happened in within that 24 hours, because the very next day I took my shahada, so if anything would have happened in within the 24 hours, I still would have been saved, right? And I had some like crazy Muslim friends were like, oh man, you should have died in within 24 hours. So like, what What are you talking about? Like, you were on the Jannah, man. You were like, right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think so. it's that easy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny yeah. thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. Man, should so, die now, nah, man. Mm-hmm, go ahead, brother. No, so like it's a it's funny thing to say, you know, because I understand the the excitement and you know the mm. wish good for you, but you know, say like, man, you should have died, like you know, it would have been great. <laughs> what? what are you talking about? <laughs> That's a funny thing. Um, yeah. So like, uh, just just tell me a bit, like, uh, so what happened with the shahada? Did you talk to a friend? Did you went to the mosque? Like, what happened exactly? Yeah. So I took I took the shahada. Uh, uh, I went I went to a uh, to a mosque. Right, and um, I said that I wanted to accept Islam. Uh, well, naturally, they asked me why, and I, 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 did, I, did not, I did not tell them the full story. I just told them a little bit, and um, so, so the Imam of the mosque, he, he, he was hearing me, and he said, "Okay, now <clears throat> you don't have to share your whole story. Let's let's take the shahada." So he asked me, "Do you do you do you know how to uh, take the shahada?" <clears throat> I say. Uh, but I will just say, it. I've never said the shahada, but I've heard people saying it before. So they say, oh, okay, go ahead, say it. And uh, so to me, like I say, uh, you know, the Christians, they claim uh, they see Jesus or they witness miracles you know, uh, and so on. To me, this was my witness of the miracles that mm. I, or I would know. I would know. No one else would know. I would know. Right? I knew I couldn't read Arabic. But on the day where I, I tried to remember how the Shahada was said when I heard, heard it, right? And mm-hmm. I repeated it, I could say it. I said, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan wa abduhu wa rasul. So the Imam looked at me. Are you sure you have never read the Shahada? <laughs> <laughs> right? Because instead of saying, uh, you know, uh, Ashadu Allah ilaha. Uh, Muhammad Rasulullah. You know, I would believe someone would say that, but you are saying in a different. I mean, it is the shahada, but you are saying in a very much more proper way with the whole thing. You know, and I said, I don't know. This is just akhir. Okay, fine. Alhamdulillah. So I became Muslim. Uh, it took me less than uh, definitely less than a day. It took me probably two salah, <clears throat> two salah. Uh, uh, Maghrib and Isha. Okay, Maghrib between the time of Salah Maghrib and the time of Salah Isha, I could recite the Al Fatiha. So it's probably a few hours just for all listeners who wouldn't know, it's just like a few hours, would say, yeah, depending like on the two. season. Yeah, correct. So I could already recite my Fatiha. Um, the very next morning, so, so did you, what I mean, so did you learn like you didn't know it? And you just like learn it and you recited it. Yeah. I looked, Alhamdulillah, I looked at the book. I like I opened the Quran and it was not even a, a, a translation, right? It was like an Arabic. <clears throat> and I and, and I was and, and I looked at the uh, at, 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 at Al Fatiha Al Am and um but I've heard this before, like I say, I've heard this before, like uh through radios or through uh you know friends uh saying it. I've heard this before, but I've not memorized this, right? <clears throat> So in within that time, and with the next morning, I could say uh, I could say Kulhu Allah, I could recite Kulhu Allah, I could recite Kulhu 
kul kolak suratul fak falak I could recite surat surat al nisa the three kuls suratul suratul nas nas you mean yeah surat al nas yeah because nisa is like a supreme long one it's the it's the third one I think of the Quran it's like a I think probably more than two hundred verse so yeah suratul nas so the three last three last sura which has like the very important sura mashallah this is just incredible yeah very incredible and in within the first week i i would have uh not i've not put in any effort right i've not put in any effort to 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 uh to read this over and over and over so that i would memorize it right <clears throat> but mm-hmm. just to take note <clears throat> but in within one week i could re- i could recite al fatiha the three kuls or the four kuls because the surat uh, kul uh, surat al kafirun which is which is simply means the non believers mm-hmm. and then um one of my favorite surah until now not i'm not saying that i from all the quran is my favorite but this has a significant thing for me uh, for my life right which is um i can't remember the name of the surah is um bismillahir rahmanir rahim idza ja anasullahi wal fa wa ra'aitan yadkhulu so basically Allah talks about a time that would come when they will be flocking to the religion of Allah and when you see this verily ask forgiveness from your Lord right So this yeah. to me all this was although it was already in the Quran 1400 years ago but to me and I I don't know right and and I ask forgiveness from Allah if 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 anything that I'm saying is wrong but to me this was Allah telling me something that you are in the right path you know you, are, you there will come a time where people will come to this religion they'll be flocking but you are, you you are already here mm-hmm. You, you're already here, right? So continue your journey. And um, uh, that's it. That, uh, I, I, I gave my whole life to Islam, and uh, and then I started studying the Sirah, I started studying the Hadith, I started studying the Quran. Um, I looked into apologetics. Uh, today, Alhamdulillah, uh, Allah has given me the opportunity. I have a uh, on the site. So my, my food manufacturing is my dunya. Mm. Yeah, food manufacturing is my dunya. My akhirah, right? My for my akhirah, I run a uh, Islamic apologetics academy. Okay. Which is, yeah, which is called Kum, and it's also taken from the from the uh, from the Quran, which is uh, Kum Panzir, yeah. uh, which sim- which simply means arise or stand, mm. right, and proclaim the greatness of your Lord. So. <clears throat> The Kum, this Kum is spelled Q O O M, Kum Academy, and all the classes are free. We teach uh, apologetics on Christianity. We teach apologetics on atheism and Gnosticism. We teach apologet- apologetics on uh, Hinduism. Uh, we teach also there is a there's a very uh, unique class in all our uh, of our apologetic uh, sorry a unique syllabus in all of our apologetics class. Be it you go into Christianity or Hinduism or Gnosticism, our first syllabus is on the ethics. Is on the ethics of being a da'in. How you should be a da'in. How did Rasulullah uh, be a, uh, uh, talked about Islam? Sahaba talked about Islam. How did Moses Ali sorry uh, Musa Ali Salam talked about uh, about Islam? About God submission. When I say Islam, I mean submitting to God. Yeah, the yep. one through God. Yeah. Yep. And how Abraham talked about it because during this whole, see, everything is mentioned in the Quran. Allah says, and I believe every Muslim would agree with me who knows this. You can easily say that Pharaoh or the Pharaoh, Pharaoh, right? During mm-hmm. the time of Moses, was. Could, we could easily say he would probably be one of the worst and the most bad men that ever walked the the face of earth or on the earth, if not the most worst. He would definitely be one of the guys up there. Mm, and yeah. this and this is what Allah tells or Allah commands 
Musa alaihi salam. Allah says, go to him and speak softly. Speak softly to him, right? So, which means that goes to us if we are if we are going to speak about Islam to even an Islamophobe, we have to speak to him softly. We can't go attacking somebody. We can't do that. That's not how our prophet taught us to do. You know, mm. uh, of course, there are contexts, right? There are contexts. We don't have to yell like how an Islamophobe would act, but we can leave them with words that penetrate their hearts and their souls. Because Allah also mentions, right, that they are hypocrites, right? And Allah knows what's in their heart. And we don't, right? We who are bringing the da'wah, we don't. But Allah knows. So leave them with her, with, with words that will penetrate their heart. It does not mean, you know, uh, slandering them or saying that they're stupid or anything. You know, you, the basic thing of saying, look, bro, you can believe whatever you want to believe. But listen, now that I've told you this and you have heard this truth and I know some point you would accept it because you can't go against reality and with your ego, you don't want to accept this, you are going to be burned for eternity. That's good enough, man. For me, that would penetrate anyone's heart. <laughs> mm, <Right>? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, yeah. so we don't that's, have to... Like, go ahead, brother. Yeah. Okay, that's... that's, that's um... That's a beautiful and interesting uh, path, and it's like it's, it's, it's amazing, like how everybody has their like own stories, but it all makes sense, mm. you know, at the end of the day. So um, yeah. I I think like um, I have like one kind of last question before the end of the podcast because we already reached yeah. like one hour, pre- almost an hour and a half, which is, which is great. Uh, it's just like um, how how what happened with your parents and your sick friends you know like you converted to islam so how did you deal with this did you have like any trouble any like how, mm-hmm. how did you deal with this with your friend and family yeah <clears throat> alhamdulillah um allah worked this miracle and um i i i know that a lot of sick families uh, especially coming from an indian background or indian subcontinent background right, uh, they're very strong in their religion and their belief and uh, parents may take this very harshly. For me, alhamdulillah, there was a little, of, I mean, it's not even compared to what people have gone through, right? Just a, a month or two of misunderstanding. That's all. And then my, my, my parents accepted it. You know, like, okay, fine, whatever, bro. You're like, <laughs> you're mm. Muslim, okay, sure. Just as long as you know that we are, that we are still your parents and you are still our, our, our child, you realize that and say, yeah, of course. Like, I will always be your, your son, your son, you know, like nothing's changed. I'm just a Muslim. If anything, Alhamdulillah, I've just been, uh, I'm going to be better now. Mm. Like, oh, okay, fine. And and that was that was about it. I mean, of course, uh, from time to time, um, especially my, my father, my mom, she's okay. My father, from time to time, he would pick on certain things, right? And, mm. and he would pick on certain things because of what he sees in the news. Like, for example, what's, hap- what, what, what's happening, uh, you know, so, we, uh, sorry, what happened in 9-11 and then uh, what's happening so, like uh, some current governments uh, you know they're not following what the the, 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 the the Islam is supposed to teach them and they're doing uh, so he'll just speak on these things and I, and, and I will just sometimes I would explain but sometimes I won't right so it depends on how his tone is if I know that okay I'll explain so sometimes I'll just say look people who kill 9-11 all these people who claim that 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 or this Osama bin Laden or these Muslims uh, uh, killed so many uh, hundreds and thousands, millions of people, uh, hundreds and thousands of people uh, during that time, 9-11. And some Muslims in other regions are saying that he's a hero and so on and so forth. They, they, they are ignorant Muslims. They're ignorant Muslims. Because the Quran, Allah says very clearly, right? Killing one, one man, that that, 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 that that doesn't deserve it, right? Uh, a pure Muslim who doesn't deserve it. It's done nothing wrong. It's as if you are killing the whole of humanity. And saving one man is as if as you are saving the whole of humanity. So you tell me, how can a person claim that I am practicing this religion when he's not practicing what the religion is actually teaching him? Mm-hmm. Right? So... Yeah. 
they can they can they can they look look they can wear strap themselves with bombs or do what they want to do and yell Allahu Akbar go ahead you can yell a million times Allahu Akbar and blow yourself up i'm sorry you still you would still not be a muslim because you're not basically doing what Allah is asking you to do you're just yelling Allah is great that's nothing wrong with that <laughs> right that's a mix of muslim <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah, so uh, with my parents, Alhamdulillah, I I, I did not face uh, a, a much problem, in no problems at all. In fact, yeah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, man, that's great. Um, yeah. and um, okay, I said that that was my last question. Actually, this is one kind of last that I have to to, to finish with as well. Is just um, so you know, like uh, part of our listeners, you have we have probably much everything. You know, we have like. Muslim listeners, we have non-Muslim, we have people who are searching for Islam and there are <laughs> different stages of their journey. So according to who you are and what you've seen, what would be the best advice you would give to either somebody who's still searching for Islam or somebody that just became Muslim and, you know, is searching for guidance on his way? Look, what, 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 would you, what would, advice would you give? Okay, <clears throat> inshallah, alhamdulillah, bismillah. The advice I would give, the advice I would give is the same advice our prophet gave to us and all the other prophets of God is that search for the truth and never stop. And how do you do this? Pick up, a, pick up the Quran. If you if you can't get a Quran where you have uh, internet today. Uh, and one of the best translations of the Quran to, into English, which, is, which has a very uh, uh, straightforward English uh, understanding, is called the Clear Quran, right? Uh, you could, or, or the other one is um, the Contemporary Quran with Contextual Translation by Muhammad Abdul Manan. I have, a, uh, I have one of the versions over here, the international version. Anyway, right? Uh, go online, read the Quran. Read the Quran, right? Look and understand and ponder on the words. Because in the Quran, Allah asks us to do this. Allah says, do they not ponder? Do they not reason? Do they not use their intellect? So this has been given to us, our, our intelligence, our intellect, our brains, our aqal. So use it. Use it. If you, are, if, you are, if you are searching for the truth or if you are not and you are listening this to this podcast and you want to look into it right uh, 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 you just you're a human being a living creature a creation right use your intelligence go and look at the quran read it understand it ask your friends ask an imam right look at the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right look at it you inshallah you will come to the realization it's not it's not an ego trip and it's not a prideful thing it's got nothing to do with us right understand that first it's got nothing to do with you me or anyone else okay it is the truth the undeniable truth right and you will come to this conclusion inshallah you will come to this conclusion that truth can only be one and because god is truth by default, God can only be one. And by default, God's teachings then can only be one. So truth can only be one because God is truth. So truth then, the teachings of truth can only be one. And that teachings of truth you will find from Islam, from the Quran, and from the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inshallah. That would be my advice. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, man. That was, a, yeah, that was a great advice. And uh uh, I think we we can only hope for guidance for you know our listeners and for ourselves first because you know we never like out of the woods until like you know um, Allah says yeah you said so it's a constant constant work so anyway in uh, it was a it was a pleasure to to have you Hasmit uh, thanks for telling us your story today uh, for all the the listeners like. Um, I would encourage you to uh, go on our Muslim, you know, so onto islam.com. Uh, 
uh, if you have any question, any commentary, any criticism, whatever, you know what I mean? Just uh, feel free to interact with the, with the website, to send us a message and uh, just to spread the word if you can. Um, also, like, uh, has made, like, if anybody would like to get in touch with you, you know, mm -hmm. because you know, they resonate with your story and maybe they want to directly ask you a question. Is there anything that we could share with the audience, like in terms of contact or... Uh, would, you, would you like us to put it in the notes of the, the podcast? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I will send you that. But uh, um, <clears throat> So if you, if you want to go to my Facebook, it's Hasmeet, H-A-S-M-E-E-T, C-H-A-A-L. Um, my IG would be S-M-E-E-T, C-H-A-A-L. Uh, that, that, that would be my personal account. Uh, my academy would be Q-O-O-M, uh, academy, uh, dot com. And you okay. can send a message there, and uh, inshallah, um, uh, I'll get back to you, inshallah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, please, like, when when you have a moment, send me all this information on the uh, through the the Facebook group we have with with Adi, and I mm -hmm. will add it to the note of the podcast. So anybody listening can also go to the notes and find your contacts if they want to to get in touch with you, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. So that was uh, our episode for the day. Um, Baraka Lofik again for sharing your story with us. Uh, I wish you, our listeners and myself, the guidance of Allah. And uh, I will give you uh, a big salam to all and uh, see you next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.